People are worried about terrorism now, and they think, you know, there's a certain group out there that are terrors, terrorists. You've got to be careful that you cannot, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, where you just automatically assume that they are. Gee whiz, I just lost my mind. Uh, predict that because they are of a certain nationality, they are also going to be terrorists. So you got to make sure you don't violate any of the fair housing laws. All right? Now, if there is a violation or there is a assumed violation, a consumer can make a complaint, and they would make the complaint to the Department of Housing and Urban Development. And they have to make that complaint within one year of the act. All right? So they have to complain. If they believe there's a violation, they have to complain within one year. Now, what happens is HUD will investigate to see if there is a violation. And the very first thing they will do in this investigation is this thing called conciliation. Conciliation is where both parties hug and make up and move on. You know, this is where now you can kind of explain that lack of intent. So HUD would bring both parties in and they're going to go, hey, look, Daryl, you made this comment that seems racist. What are you talking about? And he's like, no, 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 no. I didn't mean that all black people were fast. I meant that all the sprinters were fast in the Olympics. And I, as the one that felt the violation, go, okay, I agree with that. I believe he was probably not. That would be conciliation. We both agree. And HUD says, okay, hug and make up and move on out. That would be the first attempt is to resolve it through conciliation. Now, if they determine that conciliation, if I said, look, dude, I don't think that's what he meant. He's lying to you. I really think he's racist. Then we would go in front of this thing called the ALJ. The ALJ, in my opinion, is the worst judge in the world because they are the judge, the jury, and the executioner all in one person. It is one person. Now, EPA uses ALJs. Um, what's the other one that uses ALJs? The uh, OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, if there's an OSHA violation. So it's one person that will come in and he will listen to both sides of the party uh, parties and he will make a decision if there's a violation and he will actually award damages or impose the civil penalties. He is the judge, the jury, and the executioner. Now, <clears throat> there, somebody has told me that these three questions were on the exam. I have a hard time believing that because I will tell you, I have been teaching this course now 20 years. And way back a long time ago, the very first one, the first offense was only 11,000. I remember that. Now they're saying it's 21,000. I don't see why we would need to memorize that, but someone suggested that, not me. First offense, 21,633. Second offense is 54,157. And then the third offense is up to, look at this, 100 grand or, or potentially and seven years in jail. Dude, if you have been found guilty three times of violating the Fair Housing Act, you better rethink your strategy on what business you're in to begin with, okay? So just the thing that I like to notice is just notice that the penalties escalate. It's not like double for the second one or double for the third one. You know, it is a huge amount. Now, if there is a case that is heard based on the Civil Rights Act of 19, or 1866. Which class is that? The Civil Rights Act of 1866? That is race. That goes directly 
to federal court. Federal court. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. And if you go to federal court, those damages can result in, I love this word right here, unlimited punitive damages. Once again, what does punitive mean? It's a punishment. You are being punished for doing this. Unlimited. You could be punished $20 million as a fine or a fee if you violate the Civil Rights Act of 1866. If you violate the race card right here. That would go straight to federal court. You better be careful. They do not play with this. Now, I've told you these are the federal laws. However, every state has a state level. Some states even actually have a municipal level, all right, of fair housing laws. If the HUD has a complaint to look at, they will push it down to the state level. And the state must have substantially equivalent laws. That's what I was saying. All states have to be at least as restrictive as the feds. They can be more, but typically they are uh, uh, the least. <clears throat> if there are threats of violence against you, the fair housing also protects you for that. You can adjoin your client's lawsuit. So think about this. As a white male, I can actually file a racial discrimination lawsuit if my client filed one. If I had a client that felt like they were discriminated based on race, so he filed a fair housing lawsuit because I am an extension of my client, I am part of him, and I got harmed because, hey, he didn't buy. I didn't earn the commission. I can actually file with him as part of him. So I could, in fact, file a racial discrimination case. Now, what does this mean for you guys? Well, it could mean a whole bunch of things. You theoretically could lose your license out of the gate you could get fined a huge penalty. Remember, unlimited. You could have serious repercussions to your reputation. People may not use you anymore. Not only could you, maybe you didn't use your license, but people now believe that you are, you know, a racist individual or whatever and won't use you. So there are a whole bunch of implications that could happen to you because of this. So please be careful when dealing with this. This is not something they joke around with. All right, so that's fair housing. There are the seven protected classes. There are some exemptions in there, so make sure you understand what could be exempted from that fair housing. Also, there are some illegal activities that we discussed, like the blockbusting and panic selling and redlining, and I guarantee that you guys are going to need to know the Civil Rights Act of 1866 brought in race. The Civil Rights Act of 1968 brought in these other three. Then the Community Housing and Community Development Act brought in sex. Then the amendments of 88 brought in the disability and familial status. Guarantee you're going to need to know which law brought in which protected class. All right? I suggest down here... You guys do some more uh, practice questions at the bottom of this online section. There are also questions in the back of your ebook that can help you. And if you have further questions, I'm here. This is what you're paying me for, all right? Feel free to reach out to me at Raymond at realuniversity.com. I will catch up with you on the next chapter. See ya.